الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وقال الله تعالى في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكره واصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات الى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما تحيتهم يوم يلقونه سلام وعد لهم اجرا كريما وكما قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم ان في خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف الليل والنهار لايات للاول الالباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم نحن ولا شاهدين وشاكرين الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we glorify him and indeed we affirm that him and him alone is worthy of all worship and no one else is and we ask that he send his and ours best of blessings upon his and our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family his companions and all those who will follow him until the day of eternity respected elders dear brothers and sisters this afternoon i like to share some reflections on two central important critical aspects of the two ayahs that i recited from one from surah al ahzab and the other from surah al imran indeed in these ayat are many lessons for us but i like to focus on just two and these two aspects are the gateways to receive the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala and achieve the proximity to him and indeed these are goals that all of us aspire and wish for and these two aspects are zikr remembering our creator and fikr reflecting on the creation remembering allah subhanahu wa taala and reflecting and pondering wondering about the beauty the mystery and the magic of all that he has created In the first ayah of Surah Al-Ahzab Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala refers to us believers remember Allah often and glorify him in the morning and in the evening It is indeed he who blesses you and so does his angels in order to lead you out of the depths of darkness into light And in the second ayah In Surah Al-Imran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala tells us that indeed there are signs in the creation of the heavens and earth and in the alternation of night and day but it is only for those who understand and those who remember Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala while standing sitting and lying down and those who reflect on the creation of the heavens and of earth zikr and fikr these two aspects indeed demands of us and from us the very best of us why because these are two intentional acts i remember allah because i like to remember because i want to remember and i reflect on his creation because i have no other choice 
because anything and everything that surrounds us is directly or indirectly created by the creator and therefore in everything i see everything i experience everything i look at in it is nature that is inviting me to glorify his majesty no other creation is blessed with this gift of intellect an intention to be able to remember something and or to reflect anything and therefore this demands from us and of us to always remember and reflect on the creator and the creation why is this important why it is so important for us the people who live in united states and the reason and the rationale i selected this topic today is because i ran into a survey done by an agency which wanted to learn how american people use their time and it simply is called american time use survey and you can google this and look at there are many answers to many questions that were asked by the agency in this particular survey but i like to use two examples from the results of this survey one focuses on people like you and i ages between 25 and 54 how do they use their time of the 24 hours that they have there are seven different categories of the 24 hours that they use their time with of which three comprises of 80% of their time and the 80% of the time is used in three activities by adults like you and i sleeping eating and leisure and sports these are the three primary activities that adults in this country are engaged in and spend 80% of their life and the remaining 20% there are other four categories mundane none of them includes dhikr or fikr the second group of people who were also surveyed by this agency includes young men and women students they were asked the same set of questions and their answers slightly vary instead of the three activities that occupy the 80% of their time there are four activities that takes 80% of their time indeed sleeping eating leisure and sports and education and the remaining three activities in their case does not include fikr and dhikr so i ask myself as a believer what do i do how do i use my time what extent do i invest in things that are most meaningful versus things that may not necessarily be as meaningful although important education is very important sleeping is very important eating is very important it's critical for our survival but if this is all coming at the expense of either total or partial negligence or neglect of remembering the very purpose of my creation then perhaps i need to question and ask myself of what i am trying to achieve why again is this important you see people say that you show me your friends and i'll tell you what kind of a person you are from my young brothers and sisters who do i hang out with you show me your friends i'll tell you what kind of a person you are there are other examples what you eat is what you are what you read is what you become and so on and so forth so human society today has achieved great marvels because they have invested the time in those undertakings and endeavors 
they have split an atom they have spliced the gene they have broken time and sound these are human achievements scientific technological marvels that human beings have achieved because they have invested time in these pursuits and therefore they are made up of these things there were people at some point in time who did all of that and more in fact achieved all of these technological and scientific marvels that we celebrate today in fact arguably all that we have achieved today is based and rooted in the pioneers that we celebrate today of people like ibn sina and and uh, ibn qaldun and and then so on and ibn razi and so on and so forth you see but they did not forget to remember their creator they did not forgot to celebrate the creation it is that blend therefore that takes you closer to your creator and helps you to receive his pleasure you can live a life that is zikr free or you can live a life that is full of zikr and both have their consequences or benefits or lack thereof and i like inshallah to reflect on those two aspects as quran teaches us the consequences of a zikr free life the consequences the dangers if we so choose to live a life that is free or we free ourselves we cannot free ourselves but we think we can free ourselves from the creator there is a consequence to it that is mentioned in surah al-zukhruf whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man ya'shu an zikri rahmani tuqayyuz lahu shaytanan fa huwa lahu qareen whoever turns away from your creator they are assigned the worst of your enemy shaytan he is your company and earlier if i you remember what i had said show me who you hang out with i'll tell you what kind of a person you are so imagine what happens when you are in the company of shaytan what will happen one i may overtly do things that are in total contradiction to what i ought to be doing or i may be doing things and thinking that i am doing good which is worse than the first because in the first case at least i am realizing that i am engaged knowingly or unknowingly in things that are not most pleasing to my creator but in other case i may be thinking i am doing all good i am praying i am fasting i am doing all the obligations that i am asked and expected of and therefore i am okay and that delusion in fact is the basis of all the wrongs that can potentially happen because you are in the company of shaitan so i ask ourselves today as we enter into the season of summer when we will have a lot of time available to us or at least more time than the non summer time we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to be able to use our time in the manner in which it is most rewarding and meaningful and purposeful and wholesome and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us neglectful of the very reason why we are here and to praise and celebrate the creator for giving us these gifts of life we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our mistakes and our shortcomings and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to live a life full of remembering him and glorifying all that he has created aqul qawli hadha astaghfirullah wa lakum wa sa'ir al muslimin
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان اللہ ملائکتہ یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ اللذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلم تسلیمہ اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی علی محمد کما صلیت علی ابراہیم و علی علی ابراہیم منکا حمید و مجید اللہم بارک علی محمد و علی علی محمد کما بارکت علی ابراہیم و علی علی ابراہیم انکا حمید و مجید If you would be so kind to please uh, uh, bring yourself inside as much as possible. There are already a lot of people outside. The second part of the khutbah, my dear brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah that this reference that I'm going to make, which is in diametrically opposite to the dhikr free life, the results, the possibilities of a life full of dhikr and full of remembrance. Some scholars have suggested that this particular story may or may not necessarily be fully authentic, while others have subscribed to its authenticity, irrespective of that discussion. The story refers to a person who was a giant in the Islamic history. Known to many of us as Imam Humble. A giant who would travel the lands simply to gather a word or two, a saying or two of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unlike the travels that you and I would make today, you go online, you buy a ticket of your choice, you select a hotel of your choice, you rent a car, everything is all done. Back then, there was no travelocity or no online arrangement for your travel bookings. And they were not going for pleasure or for fun either traveling hundreds and thousands of miles only because they heard a rumor from somebody that somebody has something from about of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And hence, the man goes. And therefore, centuries later today, you and I celebrate the gifts that they have given to us. Imam Ahmad Hanbal, in one of his travels, ends up in a city, apparently somewhere in Iraq. Many of us, when we go to the cities, we may not necessarily find masajid. Our meeting points are a hotel or a library or a shopping center or a street corner. Back in the days, their value system demanded that the meeting point, the hub of all aspects of life is masjid. Imam Humble lands up into a particular masjid. He does not identify himself to the people as I am Imam Ahmad walking into your masjid. No. He walks quietly, he goes in a corner, makes a lot. Nobody knows. When he is done, because he wanted to meet somebody. And that somebody has some gifts about and of Prophet ﷺ. He was in search of this person. He didn't find that person and ends up thinking to stay back for overnight to be able to find the person the following day. He tries to sleep in the masjid. He tries to stay back to seek shelter. There was no Holiday Inn in Motel 6. Imam Ahmad Hanbal was asked by the people of the masjid or the management of the masjid, you know, temporary residence is not possible here for whatever reason. And you got to leave. Here's a man who is traveling. Here's a man who is not disclosing his identity. And he reluctantly is forced out and this process was being watched by somebody from the community from the city another Muslim who prayed in that masjid he says look you know this man is traveling maybe I need to give him some shelter 
So he offers him, he says, you know, look, I have a little business close by to the masjid on the corner. Why don't you come and stay with me? Imam Ahmad Hanbal still does not disclose his identity. And he goes with this person to his little shop, supposedly a bakery shop. He sits in a corner and he does his thing. He is thinking, reflecting, whatever that he is going in his mind. And he watches his host, the person who brought him into the place to give him shelter. And he is talking to himself, Astaghfirullah, Yazeem, Atubu Alayhi. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for all the mistakes I have done. Consistent reciting and chanting of this dhikr. He wonders that either this person must have done something terribly wrong or he is crazy. He gathers his strength and reaches out to this person and asks, you're asking, you're supplicating, you are reciting, did Allah really respond to your duas, your supplication? And the person responds, Wallahi, he responded to everything that I asked from him and more except one. He followed up, what is it that you asked and Allah did not give you? And the person responds, you know, I heard through the grapevine of this giant of a person who has collected some gems of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want to meet this man and I don't know how to reach out to him. So I ask Allah, Ya Allah, help me to meet this person called Imam Ahmad Hanbal. And the Imam replies to this person, Allah heard you. The only difference is for everything else you had to travel and for this dua, humble had to travel to you to meet you. And that's the power, that's the mystery, that's the magic of sincere, intentional raising hands and remembering Allah and asking Him. We remember nearly everything in life and more. But we forget the very creator who helped us remember everything that we think is important in our lives. But at the expense of forgetting our creator. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not live a life that is remembrance free of our creator. But let us live a life that is remembrance full of our creator at all times in the morning, in the day, while sleeping, while lying down, while studying, while playing, while taking a hike, in the times of trials and tribulations and sorrows, in times of joys and celebrations, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the one who created us. And reflecting on His creation, Celebrating all that we see, may that be a flower, may that be the innocent smile of a child, or may that be the cries of a mother who lost her son. Or may they be those who were healthy yesterday and are nearly death the following day. All of these creations must remind us to remember our creator at all times. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a heart that is full of His love, full of His remembrance, full of the majesty of everything that He has created. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to be able to remember Him at all times. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us also to remember those who are nearly forgotten by many people throughout the world. Those mothers and those fathers whose children were murdered in the broad daylight in the name of this war and that war. Let us also remember those who were thrown away in jails in whatever and wherever and were forgotten completely. 
they have their mothers and they have their fathers and they have their siblings let us remember them as well let us remember those in our community and other communities who passed away may allah give them jannat al firdaus and those who survived may allah give them sabr e jameel and those brothers and sisters who are in our community sick ya we ask allah ya allah give them health give them the best of health and ya allah we ask that you unite our hearts and unite our ranks we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to be able to question challenge the use of our time and intellect and gifts that he has blessed us with and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to hold us accountable for the misuse and the abuse of the time and the intellect and these gifts that he has blessed us with rabbana atina fid dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina azab an-nar rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab اللهم اغفر لي ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين before we uh, uh, stand for uh, salat and as you brothers are coming inside as well Uh, allow me to quickly make two very important announcements and both of them are relevant to all of us and i hope that you will uh, be able to benefit from it one the city of culver city is planning to install paid parking meters on washington boulevard between elinda and sepulveda boulevard which means that those of you lucky brothers who come here four times five times a day will end up paying 50 cents 75 cents each time you come for prayer to park the, the the your car on the street so we are going to oppose this proposition you are the tax payers of this city so there is a petition outside all you have to do is simply sign your name and and sign it so that we can give this to the city of culver city on 27th when there is a hearing that we the muslims we the city residents of culver city we the tax payers of this city oppose this idea we already pay a lot of taxes in this city we don't need any more parking meters it's going to be a burden for all of us especially those who come to masjid so this is announcement number 1 the number 2 this afternoon this evening after maghrib there will be a very important workshop by aclu in the masjid and that is for those brothers and sisters whose naturalization applications are delayed by months and years so if you are one of those who have applied for citizenship and did not become a citizen for whatever reason there is help available to you at no cost so we ask that you come and uh, benefit from this workshop if you are not one of those then those friends and relatives who you may have do please ask them as well so i think it will be at the maghrib time in this masjid inshallah jazakumullah khairan aqimu salat Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ala as-salat hayya ala al-falah Qad qamati as-salat Qad qamati as-salat الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله استوى تدلو كلوز جابز برادرز الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم 
غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ربنا ما ربنا ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فاستجاب لهم ربهم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر من ذكر أو أنثى بعضكم من بعض فالذين هاجروا وأخرجوا من ديارهم وأوذوا في سبيلي وقاتلوا وقاتلوا وقتلوا لأكفرا عنهم سيئاتهم ولأدخلنهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ثوابا من عند الله والله عنده حسن الثواب الله أكبر
سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 